during the summer split we were struggling and now it, it seems to be way better. Last year was a huge disappointment. This year I, I knew we had good chance. We are going to the global finals finally. In the start of the season we were just a bunch of guys like doing our best to prove ourselves in the league. My goal was basically to like finish sixth and like make it into next season. After we saw that we have the potential to beat every team we were like pretty sure that we want to go to Worlds and could go. Now we are fighting for the first seed for Worlds. Maybe we will play even better because we are not nervous. We're just gonna play our game and see where it takes us. Beating Lemon Dogs is just about prestige maybe. We managed to 2-0 oh, one of the best known teams in the world. I thought that they were going to do well, but not that well. After today, more people will know who the Lemon Dogs are. of the 2013 European LCS Regionals live from Gamescom. Now I know you're as anxious as I am to see Fnatic and Lemon Dogs take to the rift, so let's get right to it. It's time to send it over to D-Man and Jad for the play-by-play -play of this best of five championship series. Thank you very much, Sox. I am Lee D-Man Smith, and alongside me for this final will be Joshua Jat Leesman, as always, and of course, we have the pleasure of bringing you the final matchup of the playoffs, the championship series between Fnatic Absolutely. and the number one seed, Lemon Dogs. Yeah, and with Lemon Dogs, in a season that was up and down for most European LCS teams, the Lemon Dogs have been the only team that's been consistently good. They don't necessarily go into fights recklessly or play recklessly. They play smart and slow, and they put the pressure on exactly when necessary and pull back when it matters. Indeed, and another big reason, of course, for the Lemon Dogs' success this summer is their support, Mithy. Since he's joined the team, the Lemon Dogs have won 80% of their matches, including both of their games against Gambit in yesterday's semi-final. Yeah, the Lemon Dogs dominated both of those games. They were measured and a little bit slow, honestly. Those games were slow, but Lemon Dogs was never once in danger of losing control at any points during in the game because none of them were making mistakes. They won or split every lane. They never tried a risky Baron, and then they just chose a couple team fights. Plus, Nuke Duck just blew up the game yesterday against Europe's all-star Alex Each. 86% kill participation as Twisted Fate in the first game, and then he nearly matched the entire kill count of Gambit in the next game when he played Zed. Yeah, and of course, while Lemon Dogs, they did finish the summer as the league's number one team, now they face the spring split champions, Fnatic, in this pressure-packed finals, and Fnatic, well, they tend to thrive under pressure. Yeah, they've actually won six games in a row. Two to get into the tiebreaker during the Super Week, then another two to get second, and of course, they're 2-0 in the playoffs right here. So they are definitely on a hot streak heading into this game. So, while well, Fnatic didn't exactly dominate their semi-final series the same way Lemon Dogs did, they do have the player with the most dominant KDA in the playoffs. Yeah, it's always these junglers, it seems, nowadays, and cyanide for Fnatic. 27 assists and nine kills while only dying once this entire time. And if Fnatic wants to keep their high pressure wins coming, they're going to need Cyanide, that man right there, and everyone else on their team to have some pretty damn big performances today. Fnatic has struggled against the Lemon Dogs, losing three of the four games this summer. Yeah, the last time they met was actually just last week during Super Week. Uh, the Lemon Dogs played another one of those methodical control games and then just dominated Fnatic in the process. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the players are heading into the game lobby, so let's take a look at the starting lineups. On the blue side today, starting out in the first game, this is a best of five, remember, will be the Lemon Dogs, and then in the top lane, it is Zoro Zero. Jungler is Dexter. Nuke Duck's the man in the middle. Tabs, of course, the AD carry, and support will be, of course, Mithy. Yeah, and on the red side, it is Fnatic here. So as in the top lane, the KDA Master this weekend, Cyanide in the jungle, Xpeke, the kill leader in the European LCS in mid lane, Hushu on AD carry, and Yellowstar on support. And of course, our featured matchup for this European LCS playoff final is the battle in that mid lane. It is going to be Lemon Dogs, Nuke Duck versus Fnatic's Peke. Yeah, and of course, we're in Europe, so it's a mid lane matchup. And Nuke Duck is kind of just a slightly more patient ex Peke. They both like to split push, and they're not going to shy away from a fight. Nuke Duck, 12, 4, and 17 this weekend, and 24, 13, and 26 this season against Fnatic. So good success against him. 
Also, Noob Duck loves his Twisted Fate. He's played them more than anyone else here. And of course, Noob Duck, he is up against the deadliest player in the European LCS. XPK, he has led the league with 156 kills. He also led the league in minions, total gold, and was the fourth in kill participation. You could say he does a pretty good job for Fnatic, doing a lot of work there. He put up some pretty good numbers yesterday as well. 13 kills, 8 deaths, and 20 assists in the two games for their 2-0 victory. <laughs> and he's also had success against the Lemon Dogs. Even though Nuke Duck's been good against him, Peke's been good as well. As well, 30, 14, and 17 in their four matches. And of course, Spectator's telling him that he's on camera, so he pulls a beautiful face for us. Always the exhibition is. But finally, before we get into the match, let's see who you guys at home think is going to win the summer playoff title. According to Lollysports.com, well, who else is it going to be? It's going to yeah. be Fnatic. They are leading by 60%. And it's funny because I remember casting a game where Lemon Dogs, it was 96% to Fnatic in that game. Yeah. Against the Lemon Dogs, sure as hell, Lemon Dogs came back and won. They don't care about the odds. Yeah, and the odds right here, as far as the fan votes, aren't a huge surprise. I mean, the Lemon Dogs, they're used to being the underdogs in the votes. They've actually only been picked to win five times this summer, which is a little strange for the number one team in Europe, but that's just the way it goes because these guys have been underestimated the entire season. And to, just to make that clear, that's 23 times they've been both, people think they're not going to win. Yeah. And they've got to win top of the league. They're all of their games this weekend so far in the European <laughs> playoffs. Yesterday it was 66 to 33 against them. Yet they don't care. They, they, don't, they don't pay attention to that stuff. They just pay attention. To well, I mean, it's, is it the arrogance of youth as well, maybe? Because they are a very young team. You know, when they qualified for this, some of them were still 16. Obviously, they turned 17 when the, by the time the LCS started in the yeah. summer. So these guys are really are a young team. And I wonder how this impacts them as they're moving, you know, obviously into this game. How much they, they recognize the position in the ring. They have a chance here to beat Fnatic, who was the season one champions, who was the champions of the last split in Europe, and then Lemon Dogs can become, you know, only the second team to win a split in Europe. And it means a lot. I mean, they're all so young. 17 are pretty much across the board. Yeah, imagine that one. Casting this game, it's <laughs> got a bunch of youngsters. Kassanin and Shen are the first bounce for the Lemon Dogs. Zach and Zed being taken away. We just heard some some interesting views from Alex about Zach. Alex thinks he's probably a little on the strong side. I believe that's, that's what, what he was saying. aiming at there, yeah. of course. But uh, there's a couple of bands coming out, and it's it's interesting. So the Twisted Fate, that could be used by New York and Peke. Both these people love to play as champions. And you know, yeah. we're talking about the mid laners. Both of them actually have a very similar champion pool. We've been seeing an absurd amount of mid lane bands. Yeah. In these playoffs, especially the games against EG and Gamma was close to five. Here, we already have three mid lane bands, and of course, Zach and Chen. They're just getting rid of the very common stuff and then the mid lane things. And I really wonder if that Twisted Fate you brought up is going to be banned. Because during these playoffs, even though he had such a high priority for most of the season, he hasn't been picked that frequently or at that high of a priority. Well, he wasn't used as the first pick. He's out there. No. He's definitely one to think of. And actually thinking about it, I'm pretty sure in this match, this may have been the one where Twisted Fate was picked and Nuke would use Talon to counter it. Nuke would definitely played Talon somewhere in that last week. I have to double check that one. I know it was in there somewhere, but look at that though. Jarvan being used as the first big Dexter has gone for Jarvan quite a lot this season. And it's because he's been dominating with Yeah. He was actually, I was checking some of his stats. Of all the junglers he's played, he's actually lost with every jungler that he's played, but he's won eight times during the regular season with Jarvan. Eight and one, so an absurd win rate with that champion. And honestly, being able to get that away from Cyanide as well, both of these guys love Jarvan. Getting a first pick is worth it. Well, they went for that twisted fate. They left it open. We'll see what Peke can do with it. Everybody's seen right highlight away. videos. And Fizz has been heavily banned this weekend. Sure enough, there it is. Yeah, Lemon Dogs has never lost with Fizz. And they're open to pick it if they Ooh. choose to at any point Change here. It. it would be smart if they don't pick it right away yeah. because they don't have to, especially if they consider Caitlyn a priority pick here for Tabs. He's had a huge amount of success with Caitlyn. Yeah. And they're going to be able to get it out of Pushu's hands as well. So that's smart picking it now because, honestly, Peke showed his hand with Twisted Fate, and at this point it's all about denying more picks from Fnatic. Big stretches there by New Cook in that mid lane, so the pressure of course... We can wait till last pick. You can be like, oh yeah, I got, I got this. this, I got this, don't worry. Lee Sin, that could be selected by Cyanide. Cyanide, of course, using... Uh, it was, was it Lee Sin? He got the Baron steal with yesterday, or was it Jarvan? It may have been Jarvan, actually. Now the there were so many Baron steals yesterday, Just I think it was Jarvan. Nobody's been able to secure their Barons, have no. they? 
it's, it's, it's a bad idea. <laughs> I mean, is that, is that bad jungling or good jungling? I mean, that's the question. It's like bad no. for one side for sure. I mean, I've talked about that so many times about smiting Baron. Just, it's a 50. I feel like it's a 50 50. Yeah. You, every jungler's like, well, I, I, I can smite. It's like, sure. You're just hitting at the same time. Yeah. I mean, Wow, okay, they've gone for the Ash Zyra lane in Fnatic, so they're gonna pull that in. So we're expecting a tank to come in that mid top lane. I'm actually not sure what the way Fnatic plays if they're gonna run a tank. Almost any other team for Fnatic's last pick, and I'd say absolutely they have to pick a primary tank because they're a team of squishies. But when Fnatic is kind of at their best, especially back in the spring split, they don't team fight. They just run around the map, catch skirmishes, specifically with Soaz and Peke together, and just go for odd man fights and never set up proper lines. So they might just pick yet another assassin or high damage team. Well, it is going to be the Sona Caitlyn lane. Kennen will be that side lane. Of course, Kennen with long range. If it is going to be a bruiser, it's going to have a hard time against Kennen or, to be honest, Caitlyn and Sona. Yeah, none of those lanes are beneficial right now. Lemon Dogs has picked such strong lanes Ooh. across the board like they usually do. Ooh. That's an interesting hold on. That's a less oh. interesting hold <laughs> that's, on. That's, that's right a now. definite change. Oh, yes. From Vayne to Yorick, how the, how the size are of the casters. But this is weird, actually. The Yorick, because you typically pair Yorick with a hyper carry type, or even a couple of them. A lot of times you'll see it with like Rise and Vayne, or Rise and Tristana, or Kog'Maw and Cassiopeia, something like that. Whoever he revives isn't going to be able to come up and just dish a bunch of damage in the next 10 seconds. At this point, Soaz is basically picking Yorick for his own laning phase and a little bit of almost stalling while the other team tries to come in because it's in a sense it's a revive which will make odd man tower dies for Lemon Dogs a little bit more difficult. So those are the team comps. We'll see how it works out. The folks also being locked in there. So Lemon Dogs versus Fnatic. This is for a place as the number one seed, or you could just say we are the champions of Europe as they head in towards yep. the World Finals. Of course, the places are already locked. These two teams know that they're going to Season 3 World Finals, and they've still seen Gambit joining them there, which is interesting in itself. I mean, the Gambit EG thing was a that whole game, different ball game. That game was amazing, the set this morning, and the emotion that both of those guys displayed is something these guys in this game haven't had to go through because they haven't been up for elimination yet. This game, they're just kind of, they're playing with house money. They've made their they're one of their goals, and now they just want to get the European Championship. And you can see it is packed house here in Gamescom. Sold out, actually, on the Sunday. The first time it's ever sold out, apparently, on a Sunday at Gamescom. And can't as you can how see... how deep the fans go yeah. is the one thing that I notice. It's obviously standing room only. I don't know how people move around during the games. I think they're out just watch. And, and also thanks to all the other stands, because there's a lot of stands around here that actually have it on stream as well. They're not stupid. They know how to pull the crowds in. <laughs> Like, guys, we've got it on our stand as well. If you want to come and look at it, it maybe it's just all the way see. to the back wall. It does go all the way out there. And there it is, our beautiful stage here. Big thanks to the crew for setting that up because that was a, that's a bit of an epic stage to set up throughout the uh, days. And of course, of we switched stage. from Super Week on the Saturday and straight here on the Tuesday. It's been and a busy, after, busy and after few this, weeks. Everyone gets to head over to North America for Yeah, the you guys, you guys get to jump on a plane tomorrow, don't you? Woo! Straight to PAX. Yep. Gonna be some interesting times for you guys, but here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is the finals of the European playoffs. Lemonox in the blue team versus Fnatic as the red team. I know I spoke to these teams and they said, we're gonna have some fun with this match. They want to go aggressive. But we'll see how it is because Lemonox yesterday, they were the epitome of passiveness. Yeah, I wonder if, you know, I really think Lemonox is gonna play their game. They're one of those teams that seems like they know how to play, and they're going to prepare in this game for World Finals themselves. They've never been on this stage, so they don't necessarily know how to handle it. They've been the only consistent team. I don't expect them to just turn inconsistent while there's first place on the line. Well, Fnatic are laying in wait, seeing if they can get a trap there, and they'd be foolish to run into that because they'd be simple grasping root and nobody would escape it. Thing is, I'm actually very happy Fnatic decided to group up as five in a brush early game with Zyra, where teams are very likely to invade. How many times have we seen in these playoffs a team just walking through and trying to get a ward on that red buff? If Zyra just roots them as they walk by, they would surely get kills. And I feel like almost every team with Zyra can do that. It just didn't pay off for them this time. And it's interesting because, you know, we said right at the top of the show how Lemon Dogs do play clever. They play with their brains. They don't run into things blindly. And 
And that just right there showed exactly that. It's like they knew there's a Zyre on the opposition, there's an Ash with a critical hit, there's a Twisted Fate with a potential stun. There's a hell of a lot to absolutely ruin us in the jungle. We have no way of fighting this. Absolutely. So that's why we see very rarely Lemon Dogs has no wards in opponent territory at the start of the game. Because there was that much of a risk, and Lemon Dogs didn't want to take it because they are confident that they can win regardless of having vision of the uh, enemy jungle. So this mid lane, the battle of the mid lane, is it was our featured match of Nuke Duck versus Peke, but it's Fizz versus Twisted Fate. There's no doubt about it. If Nuke Duck can get on top of Peke, there will be problems. He should be able to get the kill as they hit to level six. Peke, of course, he's going to be doing what he does best. He's going to be doing a pet game. He's going to be backdooring. He's going to be trying to take those advantages away from the Lemon Dogs and split pushing. So I guess it's then going to be down to Zoro Zero or Nuke Duck to try and deal with that. And with the most recent patch for Twisted Fate, it actually swings the matchup substantially more in favor of Fizz because previously, Twisted Fate would try to lock a gold card as quickly as possible to kind of ward off a Fizz jumping on him. And then he'd hold it for eight or 10 seconds. But now, once Twisted Fate locks a card, he only has four seconds to throw it. So it basically means x Peke cannot have as much persistent threat in lane against Fizz, where he needs that persistent threat. Otherwise, Nuke Duck's just going to jump on him. He just managed to throw out that blue mana card and the wild cards and hit both of them on towards Nuke Duck. So starting off well. This top lane, though, so as on Yorick, we did see mm -hmm. a couple of Yorick's this weekend from Mima. It was not, not exactly going well. Exactly going well. But he's up against Zoro Zero on Kennen. And Zoro Zero is one of those players that actually has been criticized by his own teammates by having a weak champion ball. So I'm interested to see how he's going to do on this cannon. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think Zoro Zero is one of the stronger top laners in EU. And against Yorick, we haven't seen Yorick do well this weekend whatsoever. Soaz still pulling him up because he's the type who has so much confidence in himself. I mean, Soaz, he's very quietly confident. He'll never talk himself up. He's always like, well, it's always everyone else trying to create the drama with me. But there's a reason for that. Because everyone wants to beat Soaz because they know how good he is. Well, I mean, you, think, you just think back to Taipei Assassin, Stanley, top lane. He, he, he shouted, he called out Soaz. Like, in his interviews at the World Finals, he's like, I'd love to play against players like him. So it's, you know, when, when he's been drawn talent from the the champions of Season 2, of course, him himself wasn't a champion of Season 1, like Fnatic were, of course, don't forget, they were at Dreamhack back in 2011 back in when the they days. won Season 1, of course. Uh, and also, actually, Melisan, the, the support player, is actually on the community stand, so one of those... Uh, so there is actually three members of that Season 1 World Championship team in this in this hall right now. Of course, two others being Cyanide and Peke. But this bottom lane, it is going to be a 2v2. It's Tams and Mithy, who have had a very good weekend, a very good season to be honest, a very good sum up against Pushu and Yellowstar who arguably had those changes in Fnatic and have done very well. And oh my god, how much Zyra Ash have we seen lately? It's the, sh it's the control lane. You just keep people at bay and specifically when you hit level 6 you have very high kill potential as well as it opens up the rest of your team to run lower utility if you choose so in that bottom lane. See how they can lane against Tad Blade. Well, Dex is uh, he's gonna go on towards Soaz. He has that red buff, manages to get the slowdown stun. Has not come out just yet. It will do in a moment just before he gets to the tower. Is it gonna buy him enough time though? Cyanide comes in, one more Shuriken should do it, oh, but no. Soaz couldn't land it there. So it's Zoro Zero. And it does mean that Soaz survives by the skin of his teeth. And Lemon Dogs used everything to get in on that one. That's not really that huge of an impacting gank for that lane. It'll give Zero Zero a little bit of extra time to farm, but being able to escape it is great by Soaz. See pressure from Mithy in this bottom lane. Tabs took a big trade though with Pushu. Yellow Star focused on that AD carry. So no barriers burned in that bottom lane. Of course, level six is about to be approached by both Nuke Duke and Peke. So we'll keep an eye on whether that destiny goes flying out and whether Nuke Duke decides to teleport, whether he uses that teleport to follow him or to engage himself. Yeah, that's going to be a very interesting thing to track, is how Xpeke can run around and avoid Nuke Duck when Nuke Duck's going to kill him, because it's obviously a teleport fizz. He's going to be trying to dump a bunch of damage on Xpeke to stop him from going in the first place, or he's able to just outduel him when he gets there. It's all a matter of timing for him. Xpeke just hits level 6, he has destiny. And in terms of farm between the mid lane, Xpeke's been doing a fantastic job. He's yeah. starting to build up a pretty heavy lead over Nuke Duck. And that's the thing that Peke is able to do as a ranged champion right now. Only, only sometimes can Fizz keep farm even with any type of ranged champion. 
it's not usually likely, but once he gets level six or so, and the kill threat really starts becoming larger, uh, Pekka has to back off more. He has to give the CS back to Nuke Duck, and I feel like Nuke Duck's going to be making a bit of a recovery. Speaking of that CS advantage, we talked about it. Was just a big wave, and they're even the whole time. Well, Zoro Zero is what I'm looking at. The fact that he got almost double. He has just gone back to buy, so instead he's got himself an Amp Tome and a Ward to go with that double Dawn Blade Cat. Tier of the Goddess was picked up by Soaz, but Soaz had fell behind quite heavily. Of course, he just took out that giant wave, which has pulled the numbers back by 10, but it, yep. was, it was a 24 CS lead at one point. Yeah, and that had a bit to do with the large gank Dexter put on Soaz as the lane was shoved. So naturally, the lane is going to come back the other way. I think Soaz is surviving quite well in that lane, but honestly, Yorick, when you're picking him, you should be a lane bull. It's just a matter that Kennen is a fantastic laning champion in his own right, so they're going close to even. Considering the gank, I'd say Soaz is holding so. Well, we were talking about the Zyra Ash lane, how strong it is, but look at Tams. He's having a really good time right down here at the moment. He's built himself up a 15 plus CS advantage over him on the Caitlyn, and you just saw that stat a moment ago. He has been fantastic, and it, from the very first week, we were talking about the Caitlyn bans that were required for Tams because it seemed to be his only AD carry. I even remember back when they were qualifying against against All Authority. He was just running Caitlyn, and he was one of the first people I saw just always go for the Bloodthirster Last Whisper build on Caitlyn, which has just had so much popularity since then. Makes the ace in the, ace in the hole hit for so much damage, and it really kind of changes the play style in the sense you want to use your Piltover Peacemaker much more and his ultimate, and just keep his distance, absolutely. Look at Peke's build. He's gone for a needlessly large rod as his first item. A little aggressive. Yeah. At this point, because you got to keep in mind, if Nuke Duck lands a shark on him, Peke will basically die. He does have the exhaust as well, which is kind of allowing him to go with a slightly more offensive build. What this is kind of telling me is he's going for Zonyas as quickly as possible, and he's trying to survive the laning phase without Dorans. Look at that. That is just so controlled right there. So Lemon Dogs had the three members down the bottom. Nuke Duck sat by the dragon. He just waited. He's like, am I needed? I've got a good push here. I've got teleport available, but I'm just going to stand away. I'm not going to run around and waste my time yep. getting into that tri bush. Perfectly tactical precision play, and that's the bottom three gain. So Lemon Dogs take the lead. And what a lot of people don't realize with plays like that from Nuke Duck is people don't think that if they ran all the way to the lane to give support, that that could be a bad thing. Because they, oh, I'd just be closer in case something happens. But it actually could be, because it means the more ground you cover, the more likely you are to be spotted. So he's denying information to Fnatic by making plays like that. He sits around and waits. Fnatic going to try and take advantage of this one. Just to the side, though, is Dexter. Lying in wait. He's looking at maybe trying to slide yeah, no. in. Not. It's going to be dangerous. It's going to be dangerous. And you see Fnatic, they try and pull away from that one. They will pick up the Dragon, so that's going to balance out the gold. Dragon for the one tower down the bottom so far. Let's have a look at this mid lane. You can see very close between them. Zoro Zero in the top lane as well. Also pretty close with Soaz, who is stacking out that tier of the goddess. BF Sword was the first item push you bought. Meanwhile, Tabs, he goes back and gets himself that BF Sword and the boots as well, because he's built up yeah. that CS advantage, and he took that tower early. So far, Fnatic is really going for the big ticket items as opposed to the small little runs. I mean, we've seen Genji with Thorns and things like that. He's Hellstar, that might be it. That's wow. <laughs> Ace in the hole landed and nobody there to block it. So first blood does come out and Tabs. Well, he went for that Ace in the hole, got that BF Sword, does the damage. Yeah, and that was kind of typical Lemon Dogs. 10 minutes of slow play and then the opportunity kind of happened for them. The reason that Yellowstar died there was because he was taking a slightly shorter way around as he was trying to rotate lanes, but there was actually a ward over top of the river where Yellowstar was moving and it allowed Lemon Dogs to get all of the damage and have knowledge of where he was going. And it honestly just surprised Yellowstar. And Obviously, the, the ward was there because they wanted to check for Peke going top lane, and if you put the ward there, you're more likely to spot him. It's just something Yellowstar wasn't thinking of. So we're seeing the developments of Lemondor's tactics. The split push from Nuke Duck had already begun. Push that big wave down there, Peke reacts. So it's going to be those two facing off against each other. No surprise there, of course, the destiny for Peke is going to make him maneuverable. And of course, the teleport for Nuke Duck. They, they honestly actually play fairly similar tactics, but Lemon Dogs just are more reserved. We were talking about exactly. this at the start. They, it's 
Fnatic do tend to have. And this is why it surprised me that Yorick came out for Soaz. That double team of Soaz and Peke that will just either bully out and push your lane and simply mm -hmm. to the point where the opposition have to pull three to four members to deal with it. Which is kind of weird that they picked Yorick because Yorick's not the type of guy who you think buddies up and goes and assassinates a person. He really just sticks back, which puts even more pressure on Peke to make a play. The pressure on the lanes is going to be Tabs going to oh, tap one in. it up nicely. Good action with the crowd control, but it's still not going to be enough. Teleport from Nuke. Look, he's going to come down the side there. Switches up to Pushy. Manages to land the playful tricks on towards him. Gets a cross, throws out the Whoa. big Earth on towards him. Pushu is going to get covered out. Great work from Cyanide there. Iron safeguards in and kicks Dexter away from his AD carry. They are just making some big plays for no deaths. Amazing amount of tactical or er, mechanical skill displayed in that last fight just to keep people alive. Specifically, Cyanide coming in right at the timing for which it would have saved him. And they're going to come on the side there. Dexter slides in once again, but he gets caught out. Grasby Roots, that's going to be the kill. Cyanide gets in there. Playful tricks the Cyanide will go down. Nuke going to turn this one. Flash crescendo from Mithy. He's going to get a yellow card on towards Peke. Peke has to defend and flash away. Yellow Star using that Stranglethorns to just save his bacon. They just had to go back in. They realized everyone used all their stuff. If they go back again, they're going to get some kills. And the junglers ended up trading their lives. But Fnatic was taken even lower in that fight, which is allowing for a potential push from Lemon Dogs in mid lane. And Zora Zero, he's going to get punished a little bit off the side there. Pushu is back in lane. All the hit points. Almost got himself up. Bloodthirst already. So as getting stunned out by Zoro Zero and everybody backing away. Talking about those big items, mm -hmm. Zoro Zero is now going for that needless large rod as well. Yeah, he's going to be rushing the Zhonyas. Of course, that's the thing that Kennen does. Against this team, it's not as necessary, actually, because there's not a whole bunch of persistent damage that he's going to be ha having to dodge when he goes in on the fight. He's just buying it because, why not? He doesn't necessarily want to Rylize or anything to do to start. Going through the new Zhonyas rod and the Zhonyas. So, Blue Buff Invade coming out from Lemon Dogs here. Control Invade as well, because Fnatic not anywhere near that one. That is going to get still or stolen away, Dexter using that smite to confirm it and they just rotate around while this is all happening Nuke Nook he's in that top lane teleport was used already of course for that mid lane there's gonna be an arrow coming down the mid lane it's not gonna find its target Zora Zero using that lightning surge to get out of the way yeah the thing that happened with that arrow is it passed a minion which gave Lemon Dogs earlier knowledge of how to dodge it you have to be very careful as an Ash not to give your tells of where the arrow is gonna be and not shoot it past any vision and I love the way you say it gives them the early hours because I would say probably 99% of the player base of League of Legends wouldn't have spotted that in time. No. <laughs> no. I mean, these are professionals, so you got to be a little sneakier with the Ash Arrows. <laughs> so, Pushu is off the side. He is in his own land. He's actually fell quite heavily behind in CS. 28 CS, you can see, coming behind. Infinity Edge being rushed by Tabs. Meanwhile, it's going to be Bloodthirst up for Pushu. Mid lane, well, Peke, he's got the workings of a Rabadon's death gap in there already. He's going to be going rather quick for that. It's kind of strange. Maybe X Peke is just going full ability power. It seemed like maybe with the Nidacy Large Rod, he wanted to go for his Anyas to kind of go in and make some very aggressive plays. But knowing Peke, he's probably going for the split push. So the fastest or highest damage split push build he could go would be straight Rabadon's Lich Bane, which is what he has the components for right now. And we'll see which way he decides to stack it out, of course. Cyanide and Dexter. We haven't really talked about these two junglers and the impact they've had. We've just seen Cyanide making a great impact, simply defending off uh, his push shoot. Dexter's trying to make the plays as well. We saw him yeah. create that first blood opportunity on Yellow Star. So, how do we work about these junglers? Because both kind of go about their job the same way. Yeah, but the, in this game in particular, they have much different roles. Dexter is going to be trying to lock down and finish off members of Fnatic while Fnatic is split pushing. And Cyanide's basically going to be playing defense and trying to create a bunch of chaos. He's going to be trying to kick away people or kick in initiations when Lemon Dogs isn't ready for Fnatic's scatter tactics. So it looks like Fnatic is going to try and push that mid lane. You can see the force of Dragon is available, which is why Lemon Dogs are starting to position themselves off the side. That's going to be the mid lane to Fnatic. That's the first one of the game. They will get it, but Lemon Dogs are continuing to try and push out. They throw out the great Earth. It's going to get on towards Yellowstar. A lot of damage done, but that was a good arrow onto Lemon Dogs. Actually stunned up and slowed both Zora Zero and New Dog. And that's what Fnatic's going to be doing a lot of this game, is just disengaging. They're going to try and take objectives, hit and run, and then avoid being initiated upon. That's what most of their picks are completely targeted around. 
So Lemlock back off, they go back towards that dragon. Do Fnatic want to engage for this one? They have just used that arrow, of course. Orkshot comes across, gives them full vision. They know that the Lemon Dogs are on it. They're going to try and get it. He gets the steal. Cyanide, are they going to try and make them pay for this? That's the question. They're going to see a great strangle force going down. Lemon Dogs getting caught out here. Cyanide will go down as well. Mip is very low. It's going to be a great engage by Zora Zero. Zora Zero gets on towards him. So as Nuke Nuke's going to get focused down as well. Tabs is the last man standing. This could be an ace coming off of disastrous dragon there. He's walking in towards Fnatic territory. He's not going to be able to get away from this one. The stun car comes out. There's the Ash Arrow. And sorry, that's going to be the catch. And that is the ace and the dragon for Fnatic. Could not have been better for them. And let's take a look at how this happened. How many dragon steals have we seen? during these playoffs. There's another one. It's usually been a Baron, but this is why the fight was so good for Fnatic. This corridor with Zyra is a disaster to fight for for Lemon Dogs. Once that Strangle Thorns went down, it meant Lemon Dogs couldn't get the clean initiation. You can see Zora Zero only got a couple with his ultimate. Cyanide came back to finish it off when Soaz used the ultimate, and Lemon Dogs was scattered because they started that fight from within the Dragon Pit and just couldn't make it out through the Zyra and through the corridor. Top it all off, they did lose the Dragon at the start as well. Gives Fnatic a huge edge. Big, big turnaround in an actually made push who switches build. Going for the Bloodthirster? You know what? Might as well get Infinity Edge. I've just got a lot of gold. It's a smart move. Also, I'm going to go out on the limb and say he was going Infinity Edge the whole time. You don't see Ashes go Bloodthirst, necessarily. They try to benefit from the passive crit that Ash generates from her passive just to get those first hit jumps on people. Specifically just because Fnatic is going to be picking their fights so carefully. It's just, that's the thing you do on Ash. Interesting. The way the Lemon Dogs went about that one, actually they've just pinged on Nuke. They know that he's there. There is two members. Well, I'm not sure they've got the damage to control him there. Soaz and Cyanide coming in. Soaz, of course, trying to build up that uh, Mana Mune. Moving towards his Mura Mana. We do see both Lich fans picked up by the mid laners, Nuke Duck and Peke, of course. Peke still with that needlessly large rod, which he can transfer into that Rapidon's death camp, probably the next item. Zonya's Hourglass was also picked up by Zoro Zero. So the top laners right now, it's been a little bit split between them. They've been off doing their own thing. How do we see these right developing? Zoro Zero, obviously, with that CS advantage, got the two kills. Did have the death, of course, in that last ace that just happened, but Soaz, he is the man that's going to be supporting and. I didn't actually see where he used his Omen of Death in that last fight, actually. I'm not sure yeah, which target he, he went for. He on Cyanide, because Cyanide got so low from the initial, dra initial Dragon Steal that when he re-engaged, he was actually low. And to get back to that matchup, I think Zoro Zero definitely won the laning phase against Soaz. You can see the turrets down, substant superior farm. But Soaz has actually positioned himself to have a pretty damn strong game. Already, 1-0-1-4. And if he gets that Spirit Visage going quickly, he's going to be able to turn himself into one, maybe even two kind of slow dive buddies into the team of Lemon Dogs, which might give Fnatic enough heat in team fights to be able to actually take him on once they have a bit of a lead. Interesting, Zoro Zero chasing down Peke there. Peke pulling the yellow card out in a much needed time there. But he got a bit of damage on him, so Zoro Zero now switching up. And it's actually a double split push coming out from Lemon Dogs. They are shoving both with Zoro Zero in the bottom lane and Nuke yeah. he's continuing to keep pushing that top lane. Lemon Dogs and Fnatic both love running kind of what we call a 3-1-1 just lineup in most games where they have a core team of three and then two just rogues that just do their own thing off on the side. That's what both of these teams do so they'll be very familiar with it and in that type of game, Peke and Pushu are the stars for Fnatic because the arrows can catch people, the ones, or the threes if your whole team is there, and Pekka gets to go wherever he wants. Whereas Lemon Dogs really just has Fizz who can participate in that game. Yeah, both teams have actual great vision as well. Although saying that, Lemon Dogs are lacking in the top lane, which is why we see that ward going down in the river from Nuka. Bottom lane is heavily covered out there from Zoro Zero, so as trying to turn a little bit of aggression on him with those ghouls and just get forced back away gonna go for the ward the mid lane though looks like there may be an action hotspot here we do see so at uh sorry miffy just off the side i'm thinking maybe they're gonna come across flash crescendo here no nope. it's gonna be quickly interrupted yellow star throws down those plants keeps them well at bay yeah with all five members of lemon dogs near it's dangerous for Fnatic to go in for a full-on fight on top of the turret so they might hold the arrow for a little while longer he just makes his way safely across. Nukuk is just holding out in the Wolves, actually. Biding his time to come in on towards Fnatic. The rest of Fnatic are now all here. It's a straight-up 
5v5 in that mid lane. We have Dexter just off the side in the Wraiths as well. Mithy was over there. Make sure they keep that protected. So standoff, Nuke is going to go up the river back towards Peke. Peke turns straight back around and heads back from it. Yeah, and Fnatic is in a pretty comfortable situation right here. They're maybe just trying to draw out this portion of the game because they recognize that they are stronger. When you think of the matchup between Twisted Fate and Fizz, actually with, the, with these pings going down, it looks like Fnatic's looking for some type of arrow fight, knowing that Fizz isn't there. They baited out the teleport by faking that invasion. Or Nukeduck's just going in from the back. Nukeduck goes in around the side, the crescendo gets on, only gets on towards Soas. Cyanide taking very low, but Soas is deep. Zoro is here, is going to get dropped. Didn't get a chance to use the Zoli's hourglass there. Earth comes out. Taps does manage to get the kill on towards Cyanide. But look at Nukeduck, he's running for his life. He's managed to take down the support, but that is all. Mid is going to get dropped as well. It's a great fight for the Fnatic so far. They've managed to get the three for one. There's going to be Peke coming in. Stun card up towards Dexter, wild card follows through, and that's a double for Peke. It's a four for one trade. And that was exactly what Fnatic wanted, four for two, as you hold up the two fingers afterwards. That, that fight itself was something Lemon Dogs forced because Fnatic was sitting there for so long. Lemon Dogs wanted to make this a reality, but you can see the crescendo didn't land on enough. Only Sina, who can then just go wherever he wants afterwards. And Nuke Duck only managed to get the support which allowed Fnatic a bunch of freedom throughout the rest of the fight to then come and finish off. You could see Peke finished off, then came all the way back to go mid, and now they might be going for a ridiculously fast 23-minute bear. And that was interesting, the flat-out aggression from Bushu realized he had full control of Nukeduk and actually flashed to make sure he got that kill. Went aggressive onto a fifth. That was not something you'd already see. He had the barrier, of course, up there, and that will be Baron for Fnatic. 10-6 up in kills, 6,000 gold advantage. You can see they're still actually behind the turrets. They haven't taken too many objectives across the map. But now that they have that Baron on, they're going to be so much stronger. They were already trying to push the Lemon Dogs, and Lemon Dogs, well, normally yep. play very conservatively, maybe feeling a little bit of pressure. Remember, this is their first big final. I know, and we don't know how they're going to perform on these stages. We knew before this playoffs even happened, they said, oh, we're happy that we made it into Season 4. Anything else is just a bonus. Whereas Fnatic have been champions before, so they can definitely push on in full force. And right now, they're just taking absolutely every advantage possible. They recognize how much stronger they are than Lemon Dogs at this moment. Hushu has that Ash Arrow. Really, Fnatic only has two people on their team that have even died this game because the other three, Soaz, Peke, and Hushu, have just been playing so smartly in these fights. And they're allowing Sinon and Yellowstar to kind of take the hits for them. They're, they're playing this very well. Yeah, it seems to be Sino, like you mentioned, that he's going to be the omen of death magnet, it seems, for Soaz. He's having to use it on him because he's simply that frontline tank, and you can see now he's got that Aegis Legion in there as well. The Iron Locket will follow through. Had to go for that Sight Stone early on to do the funky tricks that can pull with Lee Sin. Has got Hoon Guard boots as well, so let me run in straight back out, defending it. Quick to see those Hoon Guard boots stacking up on everyone. More importantly, it seems to be Lemon Dogs. They're going to be the ones that are pressured. The mid lane now is where the poorest pressure is coming, though. Fnatic starts to stack there. Yeah, and there is no teleport up for Nuke Duck right now, so all the split push he is trying to create might just backfire. Fnatic decides to go in whenever they want. Peke is in range to teleport in. If they led with an Ash Arrow, they'd be risking giving up a bit of a turret, but they'd be trying to make a quick game. There's the arrow, lands on towards Tabs. You can see quickly Peke's gonna jump into this one. Cyanide goes in towards him. Dexter's gone out the side. Sorry, Zero having to use that on his hourglass. Slicing Mavis from doing work though. Pushu goes down to Tabs. Fnatic not in exactly a great position. The top to it has gone down. That's gonna be Fizz continuing to split push. He's still going on towards the inhibitor turret. He hasn't backed away yet. That's gonna be the ghost, the omen of death of Pushu. But it will be Fnatic pushing on towards the inhibitor to it. Have they got enough to try and take it? It's still such a risky push. They lost that fight one for zero in a 4v5. And now, even though they have the Baron, after taking the turret down, there is a fish behind them trying to get a kill. New Dog heading straight towards them. You can see the Cataclysm is going to be used. They're trying to lock him up. Sion there, so as does already have his ultimate down, remember. But where's he going? So, of course, you can't chase down a slippery little sucker like Lee Sin. Slimity slides away. They're only going to get the one kill at best out of this one, then it is going to be so as That's not a great return. It was an inner turret and a bunch of kills for an inner turret and an inhibitor turret. Well, that was one of those high-risk, high-reward plays by Fnatic, which we don't necessarily see too much of, usually. Way back in the spring split, I remember I was talking to a lot of EG players, and they were talking about Fnatic's play style. They do medium risk, high reward plays, where your response to them is risky, but they're only taking a medium risk going into it. That was actually fairly unlike Fnatic, because if that dive went horribly wrong, 
Nuke Duck could have taken the inhibitor themselves, and it almost did, but Fnatic gets away with a slight advantage. They're Flat still out. going in. Flat out aggression. These tabs are gets kicked out by Cyanide. Remember, all the Ashes go is going to catch. That is going to be tabs going down. Pushu excites revenge there. Nuke looks well out of position here. They might just be trying to go back in here because the Baron is still on a couple people, and there's the TF off. Zoro Zero is going to get taken low. He gets dropped. He's on his own. That wasn't available, and that is going to be a double kill. We do see Dexter going down as well. Mithy's going to get locked up. That's another kill for Peke. This is a whitewash of Fnatic. They're going to push straight through the mid lane. Yeah, they have four people dead on Lemon Dogs right now. Nuke Duck was the only person to make an escape, and Fnatic still with Baron on Peke and Yellow Star are taking the inhibitor that they tried to get a couple minutes ago. Big plays by Fnatic. They will take down the inhibitor. That is the first one of the game. They are now. What? It's 8,000 gold in the lead. It's a big, big advantage. Yeah, and it's because of this. Cyanide goes in and gets the kick this time onto Tabs. In the previous fight, he'd actually gotten it onto Jarvan. It allows Pushu just hit him in the face with a crystal arrow, and then they chase the rest of it down because Peke is so fast with that lift crane right now, and obviously his ultimate allows him to go pretty much wherever he wants. Once they make the corner, he cuts them off. You can't run into an Ash, you can't run away from an Ash, and clearly you can't run away from Peke, which is why they cleared up that four for zero. Well, Twisted Faint was left available. Lemon Dogs could have taken it as their first pick, but instead they chose to go with Jarvan Dexter, who is 047 right now. Should they have gone for that Twisted Fate? Twisted Fate, Peke. 407, it's a dangerous, dangerous thing to allow Peke to have. Peke is trying to make them regret this, but you throw so many bands at the mid laners already, you're pretty much just throwing them back and forth. Lemon Dogs haven't lost with Fizz all year, and Fizz is generally pretty good against Twisted Fate, so I don't think this is a pick they necessarily regret. It's just Fnatic is playing this game so well, and Peke in particular. It's a farm between Zoro Zero and Soas, and has developed into a bit of a duel, but simply put, they're not in that lane phase, and they haven't been for a while, because Fnatic are grouping up as one and creating advantages. This is not normal Fnatic play. We don't ordinarily see them stacking up they as a five so and just piling in there. But 28 minutes going into this game, we're going to see that box up thrown out. Earth pops out, unsuccessful. They're just trying to create plays now. It's if Lemon Dogs, under pressure, are starting to struggle. Peke's going to try and get caught out here. Dexter slides in, Ace in the hole will come through. Gets the blocked the out by the Zion's Hourglass. They are going to see front shut down on towards Peke. The bonus goal going to Nuke Dog. Fnatic going to back away. Well, Fnatic's trying to play aggressive. Lemon Dog sniffs an opportunity, but they get flashed away. And I believe Lemon Dogs is not able to finish this push. This is Fnatic in my opinion, just experimenting a little bit because they've already qualified for the World Championships right now, yet this game still means a lot for them. So they're in a unique situation where they can play slightly differently with good rewards, but without having the maximum punishments against them. They're almost never in the situation as professionals. We saw both of these teams also running a double AD comp in the uh, Super League because well, Fnatic felt they were safe up here in the first game, or maybe they pulled out something fancy. It didn't work for them. Lemon Dogs themselves also pulled out a double AD comp. Didn't work for them either. So I haven't really seen double AD comps work as long as we're on this yeah. topic. They see like it's a beautiful idea, and you think, man, if we only had two AD carries, wouldn't that be great? And you're like, that would be great, man. Awesome. And you're like, wait a minute. I think we're missing something in this big comp. I just think it's the mid lane just going, I can play as well. I can do that. <laughs> it feels really fun. It is mean, fun. Winning is also fun. Winning is uh, a much better feeling. So, okay, with that blue of Flitch Bane stacking out a. Got that rabbit on Death Cat. Now there's on his hourglass on him as well. He is pretty much a complete physical fate right now. We could almost say the same for Nuka. With that Zonyas, with that Lich Bane in there. Mm. Guess rabbit on Death Cat will follow as well. Yeah, and it's actually. Fizz follows this really weird power curve, actually, where he's strong early, actually dips for a while, and then when Fizz hits four, five, or six items, he just starts killing absolutely everyone. And I don't think Nuke Duck's actually quite there yet. He's pretty strong, but until he actually gets a death cap, he's not going to really blow people up who aren't a support like Yellow Star. And Zoro Zero has gone full mage tank as well, like absolutely trying to blitz people. Rabadon's death cap was just completed by him, mm. along with that Zonya's Hourglass. Yeah, he's going to need to be doing a bunch of damage, and it's kind of smart of him to be building slightly more aggressive right now, since Lemon Dogs isn't necessarily the ones looking to dive, so they don't have to worry about the turret aggro or the damage he'll take coming in. They're mainly going to be trying to play reactively to what Fnatic is doing, and Fnatic is trying to make a bunch of plays as they go for the spare. Trying to get that Baron down, trying to use the ghouls actually to take that uh, 
do advantage. Dexter's going to get locked up. He's going to be on a slide away, but the arrow does manage to land. Is it going to be enough to get away from this one? He should walk away. That's the actual arrow burn. I really didn't get much for that. I thought Cyanide might be able to go back in. And here's the counter again. They're going to try and get in towards it. Cataclysm was used. He's locked up Soas, but there's not a great deal of damage done to him. Vicky tries to get close, but he's in danger of getting caught out. Oh, has to flash away. Cyanide caught him. That was split precision flashing as well, because Cyanide could have followed through there. They're just going to keep going. Soas is getting caught out as well. There's a lot of pressure on him, but he's so tanky. He's just healing it all back up. And how aggressive is Fnatic willing to be here? Because Cyanide is incredibly low, healed up a little bit they have no ash arrow but they know zero zero has been back in base and in this game in particular Fnatic has been pressing harder than usual they might look to stick around this is a dangerous damage to start for power Baron? they can't go for it lemon dogs have all backed off we've seen the mid lane actually the inhibitor is under pressure from minions so we can see that zero zero is there and it is going to be the inhibitor doing the damage at the moment but that is going to be a where was that tower that went down <laughs> What? It's got to be the bottom lane tower that just went down. There we go. Just trying to see where that what happened there. The minions taking something out, but nevertheless, Fnatic did back away from that Baron. No surprise there. Would have been dangerous, dangerous play. Lemon Dogs themselves having to deal with this massive weight push of minions. But look how many wards are out there. Lemon Dogs actually have much better vision of that Baron area than the Fnatic do. Yeah, specifically Lemon Dogs, since they were moving around in that jungle for so long, are very protective against a counter initiation. And it's brilliant of them to spend this much on wards early on because all Fnatic wants to do is fire an Ash Arrow through the jungle while Lemon Dogs is coming up and initiate a fight. But since they have advanced vision of these Ash Arrows, it's going to be much easier for them to reactively avoid them. Just waiting to see. Look at this. Nuke Duck. He's got that teleport available, remember, so he can join the party. He's going to back off to base. Doesn't want to use it as actively. Fnatic trying to bait out Lemon Dogs into coming into here. Three of them lying in wait. Yellow Star simply playing possum with that oracle to clear out those wards and hoping someone engages them. Yeah, New Duck's not even close right now. Teleport is up for Fizz. And see, this is just Fnatic being more aggressive than usual. They're at very real danger of getting initiated on by Cannon. That Baron is getting very low, though. 4,000 health. Ooh, the arrow is going to miss, actually. Teleport comes in straight onto Stranglethorns. Will it be enough to come and control them? It's a great crescendo coming out there. Lemon Dogs could turn this fight. They're going to get in there. That's going to be enough from Zoro Zero, but the damage is not quite there. Mithy takes a big chunk. New Duck has yet to engage. Now comes in, gets the shutdown on towards Pushu, Fnatic have to disengage this one. Lemon Dogs, they're going to try and turn a push mid. And that fight could have been a lot worse for Fnatic because Zero Zero never really got in for his cannonball. Fnatic could have gotten wrecked, and we talked before how Fnatic doesn't have a team fighting composition. So to corner themselves as five near the Baron is extremely dangerous. They only lost that fight one for zero, but Lemon Dogs is definitely rolling a bit back in this game. Lemon Dogs using their standard control passive play, making it plain clever play as well. Where is Peke going to go? Oh, he didn't get away from that one, actually. He was engaged. Dexter slid in and interrupted him. Peke does just walk away, though. Fizz was close by, so New Cook was looking to maybe try and pick up some kills there. But again, like I was just saying, they, they took that middle turret, then just went swung around for Dragon. They didn't wait around too long. They didn't try and push that mid lane. No, and I feel like this advantage that Fnatic has gained from the inhibitor is kind of lost. And like Lemon Dogs does, they play low risk, so they won that Baron fight, and the risk play would have been going for a turret, but knowing how aggressively Fnatic has been trying to take down Baron, Lemon Dogs needed to make sure that they were prepared for this upcoming fight, and they also needed to make sure they could refresh the wards in their own jungle, because if Pushu lands one of those Ash Arrows, it's going to be trouble. And this is not... Pushu has been playing amazingly this entire game in Split. The reason he's not landing his Ash Arrows isn't because he's put firing them wrong, it's because Lemon Dogs knows how to play against Ash so well. They know how to avoid it. A big stun that comes out. So as of course with that Mana Mune completed into his Muramana. The LC in Peke, he needs that blue buff. He needs to keep that destiny on cooldown as long as possible. He's gonna go and clear out that bottom wave while the rest of Fnatic they go for that shove down that mid lane. There's only three of them there right now. Yellow Star's gonna try and join them and Lemon Dogs thinking of creating something. Again, they've got a lot of ping wards down, a lot of ward coverage at that Baron. I don't think either team really wants to go for it now though. No, not quite, because it's, it's at a point 
for Lemon Dogs is behind in overall gold, but very even in actual team fights. So if they initiate the wrong way and get caught by Yellow Star's Strangle Thorns, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. Whereas Fnatic wants to maneuver around the map and kind of catch Lemon Dogs in a weird spot, which is why Fnatic's forcing all these awkward looking initiations and movements. Yeah, of course, the inhibitor is exposed in that mid lane, so Fnatic can just walk straight up and take it down. They've got to be careful, they don't get engaged upon, though. This plant's doing great work from Yellow Star, getting it shuts it out effectively at all of Lemon Dogs. And this is just a great play by Fnatic. It could backfire if they're not careful, though. So, as is in the base, if they all come in for the inhibitor, Lemon Dogs can get them. At the most part, Fnatic wants to peel away and slowly take Lemon Dogs into a tight space. That's why Lemon Dogs does not immediately follow. Luke Dove desperately trying to get them to either Pushu or Peke. They're going to be the targets. And the fact is, he's still behind them, while the rest of the team have got in position to defend out that inhibitor. Oh, Luke the fish! does get spotted out. He's going to go on to a Soaz. Nearly pulled it in to force Pushu there. That's not the target he wanted, though. That was blocked off by Soaz to prevent Pushu from getting hit by that earth. That was a close one. Nuke Dunn had... Nuke Duck had done so much to be able to get around behind Fnatic. He knows how difficult it is to plow through all the defenses they have there. If Nuke Duck tries to approach a fight up front, he's got to get past Cyanide's kickback, Hushu's Ash Arrows, XPK's stuns, and all of Yellow Star's roots. That's why it was good for him to get around the back. And then the fact that the fish landed on exactly the wrong target, ah, all that work for nothing. All that work for nothing. And Fnatic return back in towards that Baron pit with that Oracle. Clear out everything that Lemon Dogs worked hard to get back in there. And we are back to absolutely the same position they were five minutes ago. But the difference is Fnatic, he is down, uh, Peke, sorry, down that bottom lane. Pushing out for Fnatic, keeping the pressure on towards that bottom turret. And that's going to force Nuka to have to re react to this one. Teleport not yet available, but it probably will be by the time Fnatic are in position to maybe try and pressure on the back. Yeah, he's only got 40 seconds left on that teleport, and knowing that Peke and Yellow Star just went back to base for Fnatic, he's safely able to farm out that lane a little bit. Nuke Duck's getting dangerous, by the way. He's just picking up another needlessly large rod, and this is the fizz that can start blowing anyone up, which means Fnatic has to be extremely cautious. But speaking of blowing people up, a Deathfire Grasp, Lich Bane Twisted Fate, can basically just pop someone if he gets the combo off properly. Much like Alex Hitch's Kale did a couple Freeze, days yeah. back, this TF build can actually do a very similar thing. We'll keep our eye on that one. I'm also wondering where the push is maybe going to go for a, a defensive item towards the end. He's up to his five item building there. You can see that fancy bounce along with the IE Bloodthirst at last whisper. Yet to go for that final item. Meanwhile, Taps looks like he's going towards a Blade of the Rune King as his fourth item. Seems like a smart call for Tabs right now because he needs to cut through Puchu. Was that arrow gonna land? No. Nope. Well, once a... again, you can see the forward ward in the mid lane. Let everyone know that that arrow was coming down and it allowed everyone to move to the left. They all just sidestepped off there. It's a pretty short cooldown. It's gonna be about 40 seconds before that's back available. Them dogs are gonna realize that. You can see they tried to create a play straight off at Yellow Star. Almost got caught out by Dexter, but he did engage because the vision was great around that river area and Fnatic. Keep control. Cautious play for both teams right now. Yeah, they're both playing a little bit low risk right now. If we know who the riskier team is here, it's going to be Fnatic who actually forces something. Lemon Dogs feels very confident in their ability to team fight. So they're just going to react to Fnatic and basically try and dare them to come in for a battle. Yeah, you can see they're pushing up that mid lane. Fnatic are reacting to this one. They're coming around the side, coming around both sides. In fact, Soas is looking at coming around the backside, trying to shut them down, slow them, so the rest of the team can get in there. Pushu also putting those volleys across. We do see Peke just off the side. The grand play, a lot of lockup from Fnatic here. If they land it right, we do see the plants coming through. Dexter almost getting caught. Lemon Dog's trying to back away from this so one. He's, he's been caught. He's going to get up to get away from this one. He's taken very low. That means Flash Crescendo won't be really available. Fnatic have done a great job at separating and forcing Lemon Dog's well away from lane. And now Fnatic can just run right down the middle lane. Lemon Dog's is basically going to have to bound right back for it, despite how low mid he is. So if they ever take a wrong turn, knowing Lemon Dog's is starting this fight from low health, Fnatic may have an edge. This could be a fight they're willing to take. That's the inhibitor going down though. Fnatic are going to go in towards it. Lemon Dog's backing off. Nuke Dog stays at the side, but Fnatic aren't interested. They've got in, they've got their objective, and they back out. That was Soaz making a play on York. Not the playmaking type champion you're normally used to, but he has actually accumulated a very scary Yorick build. He's an incredibly tanky man, but because he's got that Muramana transform, he's able to get squishies down. 
quite quickly as we saw in that last fight. So he's actually now quite a nuisance for Lemon Dogs to deal with. AK uses Destiny, wipes out the entire wave with a singular red card. But that does mean Destiny is not available. Lemon Dogs tried to quickly take advantage of that, went in towards that Baron. The rest of Fnatic are close by, so Lemon Dogs choose to think it was a bit too risky a play. It was a risky play, but at the same time, that was a bit of an opportunity. Because once XPK used that Destiny, Lemon Dogs could have noted that Peke's mana was incredibly low. So you knew either Peke was going back to base or he was stopping at blue. And he didn't have an ultimate to come in immediately. Lemon Dogs would have had a fair amount of time for 4v5. But then you factor in Cyanide and how Lemon Dogs had already lost Dragon to them earlier. It makes it, like usual, the smart move of Lemon Dogs to back play. There's nothing worse than losing out that Baron and tanking Dolok. And by the time they would have done it, Peke could have been back there. So, yeah. Fnatic, they are in the driving seat. We are hitting the 42nd minute of this game. We've already seen 400 CS on Peke, highest in the game, and no surprise there. Nukeduk actually quite a long way out of position, and Fnatic quite close by to him. Choose not to push across, and again, it's ward clearance, ladies and gentlemen, around that Baron pit. I feel like been in this situation many times in my casting career. But right now, Lemon Dogs actually kind of ran out of wards near the Baron area, so they have to be very cautious in this approach, which gives Fnatic a lot more control and power over where this next fight happens. If any of the Ash Arrows land, it could be one for Pushu in this fight. Well, Lemon Dogs are pretty separated here. The Ace and the Hole will come across, but look at that, he barely dead so as. And now Mithy's actually in trouble. The Arrow's gonna land. Mithy just gets dropped. Stranglebolt uses a great disengage by Yellowstar, but now Fnatic want to chase on towards it. Soaz is gonna get taken though. Uses the ultimate on down. himself, gets bursted by Zoro, zero. And now Caitlyn is going to get dropped, Tabs is in trouble, Nukeduk's not going to be able to get out of this on. His Hourglass gets locked up, tries to play for Trickster away, but gets double killed by Peke. That was a three for one, and Fnatic now looking to take a big advantage. It was the slow play ward game there by Fnatic, and Peke got his combo off. At this point, Dexter's just trying to run around. There's only one possible defender of the base for Lemon Dogs right now, where there are four strong members of Fnatic pushing in. They might go for Nexus turns here. They should be able to do it. Of course, Peke in there has got a hell of a lot of damage. Oh, Look at that. my word, he just drops that turret in a singular card nearly. Of course, push you in there. He's got almost his full build. Ash, this is going to be Fnatic taking game one, ladies and gentlemen, of the finals against the Lemon Dogs. We are going to see the ultimate coming out from Zoro Zero, but that's simply going to get him locked up. It's only buying time for Fnatic, and they will get the kill on him. Not two kills, not bad there for Zoro Zero, but it will be the Nexus going down. Fnatic take game one. Best of five. Now, first of all, one game closer to an extreme season three split season in a row here in Europe. And even though Fnatic played the start of that game rather aggressive, they hit a snag in the middle of the game before they could eventually finish it off. So, one down, four to go, maybe. Or just two for Fnatic. That's all they need if they play well enough. Lemon Dogs have got to think about that one. They've got to think about the picks and bans. They've got to think about the plays they used. Because you think back to that dragon, the first dragon fight. They lost the dragon for a smite from Cyanide, and they got aced. Yeah, that was very well played around objectives for Fnatic. And that's the team comp they specifically picked. All the extra mobility they gained from having the Twisted Fate, as he was able to survive most of the laning phase against Fizz, being able to pick Ash and then deal with the Caitlyn lane, having Zyra never getting initiated on in the wrong way by what was a very strong initiation team from Lemon Dogs. The dive potential that was Jarvan Kennen could have caught them in bad spots, but Fnatic was one step ahead that entire time. All right, guys, that was a fantastic match by Fnatic. Let's go over to Quickshot and Kobe to break down how they won the match. Thank you very much, team, and congratulations to Fnatic for picking up a victory. Uh, it was a game that was pretty hard fought, but it was basically Fnatic making all the moves. They, they seem to have all the answers to everything that Lemon Dogs uh, was throwing at them. Let's go right back to the beginning, talk about the picks and bans. We've seen the ash Zyra combo once again. <laughs> We've seen a Yorick pick thrown in there as well. Uh, what did you think of the Fnatic comp? So again, this is... When people always talk about the style of Fnatic and their split-pushing style and their skirmishing style, this is why you can't give them the Ash Zyra. That's why when they were playing EG, I kept saying you simply can't give them that much control. The engage, the disengage, the only thing they have to give up with that lane to take Ash Zyra is their bottom turret because they're up against a Caitlyn. But 
Uh, Caitlyn Lane is going to take that in just a matter of time anyway. They're willing to make that sacrifice to have their control over the team fights for the entire mid and late game. And the Yorick pick, now, that fits into their skirmish style. Yes, he's not a tank early, because 95% of people build Yorick uh, with the tier into the man immune, into the mirror mount at first, but he becomes a beastly tank later, and for the mid game, when he's not a tank, he can just ult whatever person does get caught and targeted in their skirmishes, so they are okay with that person going down, I'll just get back up. Yeah, we actually seen that a couple of times throughout the course of the game, that it was cyanide very early on, later on it was whoever got crescendoed up and got bursted down. That's gonna actually lead us quite naturally to our very first replay, which was in and around the uh, the Dragon Pit. Let's pull that replay up on your screen. It actually starts with the Lemon Dog sitting on the Dragon, but cyanide does what cyanide has been oh, doing for a very long time. So I had to pull this clip because this is just jungle power right here. Cyanide pulls a beautiful dragon steal to start this one off, and he escapes. It's Lemon Dogs trying to catch him that makes them overcommit in the river and allows Yellowstar to make use of that giant amount of control that Zyra has in the river. She can actually block off the entire river with her ultimate here. So let's see. First, we'll start out with the steal from Cyanide. Just beautiful timing right here. And he's even going to be able to get out scot-free. They try and do a, a chase over here, which immediately Fnatic turn the tables on them. The roots into the strangle thorns, and Mithy is going to get caught here. He is able to get off his crescendo, though, before he does get 100%ed. So this is going to allow a little answer from Lemon Dogs as Zorazil flashes in with his ulti to finish off uh, the Caitlyn. <coughs> But that's just not enough to answer here because Soaz had ulted Cyanide. That was their fill-in for a tank instead. And they were able to catch this one out, finish off an ace and a dragon steal. So they got everything. And that was at 17 minutes. Usually we don't see aces plus objectives till much later in the game. Yeah, and this is actually something that, you know, continued to trend throughout the course of the game. Every time these very big team fights did take place, Fnatic would win quite clearly, quite dominantly, but Lemon Dogs would be able to get some scraps, would be able to get some kills yeah. in place. And, you know, because we didn't really have that traditional tank from Fnatic, uh, the onus was on them to make these fights work, which does lead us to our second replay. Let's pull this one up on your screen. It is going to be another fight, this time in the mid lane, and this really highlights the skirmishing power that Fnatic has under their belts. Yeah, so this one I just wanted to uh, show a clip where we can actually explain how Fnatic fight as a team if they ever are forced to. They would much rather split push and skirmish, but this is a point where they actually do get caught because of the teleport that uh, Nuke Duck goes into the river here. And they just happen to be in the perfect terrain for splitting up here. They just, they all spread out so their uh, Lemon Dogs cannot corner them in. And then they use Zyra's ultimate to gain control of the center of the battlefield and open up a perfect arrow combo here. So let's roll this clip and we'll see how they shut down Zoro Zero by directing the focus. Here, they spread out here, so the Crescendo only hits their two semi-tanks. And then that Zyra ultimate opened the window for the arrow to go down the middle of the battlefield and they take out Zoro Zero before he can Zanyas, before he can ultimate. From this point, it is the exact skirmishes that Fnatic want. Everyone spread out because of that giant strangle thorns that went down in the middle of the map and Nuke Duck, he's on Fizz, who's very tricky, but he has to use all of his abilities to get in and make the assassination successful because he had to take Teleport to deal with Twisted Fate. Whereas Peke comes in, able to chase down another one. So the one thing that I do want to talk about, just as far as the individual players were concerned, Nuke Duck never really got to nuke anybody with that Fizz. He, <laughs> he, he got himself into a fairly good position, but he couldn't really take out the Ash. He didn't really get that overpowering uh, lane matchup against Twisted Fate. And in general, that sort of trend for most of the Lemon Dogs players, you know, Zoro Zero and Kennen, he didn't really get off the best slicing maelstroms. There were a few, but it just felt like they couldn't really get the most out of their compositions and their champions. Well, they did their best to. It was because of the control that Fnatic got with their picks. And Lemon Dogs actually played it really well, stalling out the, the game expertly when they were behind. They were able to pull that amazing Baron stop uh, where they got a kill. And that was when Nuke Duck actually did go back in on Ash and was able to burst him down once. But all the stall in the world wasn't able to get them the gold lead back and they never got that one 
uh, team fight ace to turn it around. If you can't take control back from the team that's controlling you, you're not going to win the game. So we do have to take a very quick break, and when we return, we're going to be joined by EG, Snoopy, and Crepo. Then it is time for game two in this best of five championship showdown between the Lemon Dogs and Fnatic. Do not touch that mouse. The LCS Live from Gamescom is going to be right back.